hello, I should be doing something important and worthwhile, but instead I'm doing this fucking YouTube video. You may notice that there's a fan blowing. I'm not turning that off because it's summer, so fuck you. This is a tier list of our anime's collective top 100, supposedly. I've seen a lot of my friends do tier this tier list to say, hey, here's how my taste compares to the, 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 the lay Reddit taste, so I guess I'm going to do that as well, because I'm bored. So, yeah, is this really a hundred? I guess it is. We'll just, I'll just kind of quickly go through as many of these as I can. I already see a couple that I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to preemptively add a new row. It's going to be for... Um, so this one's the haven't watched tier. I always hate when it goes from red to green because green's bad. Uh, so this one will be gray. Uh, sorry, gr green is good and red is bad. That's what I meant to say. So I'm going to change this real quick. I'm sure this is real riveting for you. Wait, sorry. I know how colors work. Orange. Slightly less orange. Uh, yellow. Yellow's actually my favorite color. And did you know that? That's why my online persona is Fennekin. Okay, that's better. I, and I don't think I need to explain how tiers work. S is good, D is bad, and they're a range. This should drop. That's going to be that tier. Because I already know that there is some anime on here that I have dropped. Um, oh, I, I, actually, I should say... Uh, you know what? I'll come to that if I see anything. I, I kind of thought of a different scenario, but we'll just see how this goes. All right, so the first one is Vinland Saga. Uh, it looks like specifically Vinland Saga Season 2, but I for all of these, unless... Okay. So I'm seeing like one Kaon. I'm seeing one Monogatari. I, I, is there a different Monogatari installment on here? Because that'll determine whether or not this is going by overall series. And I think that that is what it is. So I'm assuming that's how this works. So this isn't Vinland Saga Season 2. It is all of Vinland Saga. That's what I'm getting from this. Uh, Vinland Saga is really good. I have seen both seasons. Uh, season 2 was like the only anime I actually watched to completion in 2023. So there's that. It was really, really enjoyable. Um, I'm not like super in love with this franchise, but I do really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's a very, very well-written and very unique story with how the main character is less directly involved with the things that are going on in this story than I think most protagonists would. Instead, he has a very unique placement in the world where a lot of things do just kind of happen around him and he finds himself involved with a lot of it. But the way he's able to, uh, the way it's, the way these things shape him as a person and the way he's able to hopefully, as he wants, change the world as a result of it is uh, very, very fun to see. So, I'm gonna say Vinland Saga is an A. This is a this is a good series. Not one of my favorites. S tier would be for actual favorites, but very very good. On the other hand, Kaguya-sama that's an absolute favorite. If you know me, you know I am all about Kaguya-sama. Uh, Chika Fujiwara is one of my favorite characters of all time. Although Yu Ishigami would also be one of my favorite characters. They'd all be a f one some of my favorite characters of all time. Even some of the characters that aren't so important, like Maki, who was introduced in season three, absolutely phenomenal side character. Kaguya is a series that I have given a 10 out of 10 to in every installment. All three seasons of it, I have rated a perfect 10 out of 10, which I have not done for anything except for Steins Gate. That's the only that's the only thing with multiple installments that I've ever given a 10 out of 10 to. And this doesn't even apply to anime specifically. It applies to video games, music, movies. Nothing I it, nothing in my life has multiple 10 out of 10s except for Kaguya-sama and except for Steins Gate. And there's a bit of an exception for that. Uh, which I'll get into when we get to Steins Gate, because I know that's definitely on here. But yeah, Kaguya-sama, it is just as perfect as a series can get, in my opinion. I haven't seen the movie yet, and I haven't read the manga, so I don't entirely know how it finishes, but I'm still 
a really I, I gotta watch that movie I, I actually can't believe I haven't done that it, the movie just kind of came out over uh oh I remember why I hadn't seen season three yet when the movie came out uh into theaters so that's why I missed it oh well and then we get to Neon Genesis Evangelion. Now, I kind of have weird conflicting feelings about Ava because I haven't seen it in, at this point, eight years. And when I did watch it eight years ago, it was one of the... <laughs> this might be weird to say. I want to say it, it was one of the first anime I watched. It was within, like, the first 50 anime that I watched. Um, and I didn't like it too much. I felt like I got it. Like, it, it wasn't necessarily that it was confusing to me. I just didn't particularly like the way it was telling its story. I didn't really connect with much of the characters. Um, and I definitely didn't like the way it ended, either with the with the TV show or End of Ava. It was just, like, too abstract for me to really appreciate. That being said, I also understand that this is a bad opinion, and that's why I said that I've watched this one time eight years ago. It has always been on my mind that I need to revisit Ava. So I definitely, I feel like I would have a greater appreciation for it nowadays, especially now that I have a better context of how anime has been shaped around it, or just better appreciation for the kind of story that it's telling in general. I just feel like it didn't work for me at the time. I'm glad I watched it at the time. Hang on. I've got some big ass fucking flies flying around in my room because it's summer and that's what happens. So there was one that landed on my computer and I slapped it. I don't know what happened to it though. I don't see it. I didn't draw blood, so I guess it got away. That's a that's unfortunate. That's embarrassing on my part. Uh, so anyway, Ava, I'm gonna put it in C tier. I know people are gonna hate me for that, but again, outdated opinion. Maybe one day it'll change. I just have to find time to sit down with Ava. Um, and by the way, this is just Ava and e end of Ava for me. I have not seen the rebuilds. That was one of my, that was kind of a, a condition for me is that for, I said that I was going to watch the rebuilds when they, when they finally did 4.0 or whatever the fuck it was going to be called. And uh, that's actually out now. And I still haven't done to the rebuilds. And I said that I'm only going to watch the rebuilds after I watch the original series again. I don't want to, Oh, there it is. I got it that time. Fuck you, buddy. So, yeah, that's why I haven't gotten back around to Ava or watched the rebuilds. All right, Jujutsu Kaisen. I've only watched Jujutsu Kaisen while intoxicated on some kind of substances, and I've enjoyed it at in, in the moment. I also can't remember anything about it. I cannot tell you a single thing that happens in Jujutsu Kaisen. And the couple of times that I have watched it sober, I've always been like, yeah, it's an action series. <laughs> I really do not have any strong feelings about it. I'm kind of not sure why people get so worked up over it nowadays. And now I know some manga spoilers, so that's funny to me. I'm going to put it in B tier. It is enjoyable. Yeah, I really, I have nothing against it, if nothing else. So that's always how I felt about Jujutsu Kaisen. This series has existed, and I've been passive towards it. Like, all right, good, good for you guys. That, that's nice. Happy for you. Angel Beats. This show... I mean, I don't want to say it completely sucks. It's not the worst thing ever. I feel like I need a different tier. Hang on. S tier would be like 9 and above. This would be like 8 out of 10-ish. This would be like 6 or 7 out of 10. This would be like mid. Yeah, this sh th this shit's mid. I'm calling Ava mid. Uh, and then this one's bad. And then I'm going to have another tier. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. Damn it, messed it up again. How do buttons work? I'm so stupid. Sorry, I just woke up. That's not the best excuse, but that is the excuse I'm giving for this terrible performance right here. Uh, I'll just say terrible for now. I'll probably rename this later just to be funnier. And then uh, change the color on this. All right. Yeah, so Angel Beats goes in the bad tier. I made a new tier for Angel Beats. 
I don't like this series at all. I absolutely hate Key and Jun Maeda, uh, his way of writing stories with the ridiculous zany humor, but then they it, then it tries to hit you with the super emotional moments and it does not work at all. The clash of these two tones does not work for me whatsoever. Um, I, I'll admit that it can be funny. I do remember Angel Beats having some banger jokes, like the rocket chair. Everyone remembers that. That was fine. But the story in general, it was interesting. Um, I don't want to say what it is in case you haven't seen Angel Beats, because there was kind of a twist to the whole plot. And it's fun, I guess. I didn't completely hate this series, which is why I've, I avoided putting this in the last tier. That's why I, I made a new tier so that it, this wouldn't go in the last tier, because I don't hate it that much. Um, it's just really definitely not for me. Um, but also, I would say one of the better examples of Key and June Maida's writing style, because there are a lot worse examples of it, so... Yeah, just not the worst thing in the world. That's about as much as I can say about it. Um, this looks like Yu Yu Hakusho. I actually technically have seen Yu Yu Hakusho, some of it, many years ago as a kid when it was on TV. Um, I definitely can't tell you anything about it nowadays, though. And Hori Mia's on here. Really, Hori Mia's a top 100 anime. Okay. I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. The The web manga was extremely popular, and I always liked how they adapted this. Um, I actually got through most of the side series, Horimiya Peace, and I enjoyed it a lot. I was actually really surprised by how much fun I was watching, uh, how much fun I was having watching essentially random caveats from the whole Horimiya cast. It was very enjoyable. I, I do like Horimiya. I think I gave the original series a 7 or so, um, and I think that's about what I would give Peace. I would say that would, that's definitely above Jujutsu Kaisen, but definitely comfortably in the B tier. This would be like a B-plus series for me. Um, Horimiya is a very, very solid romance series if you haven't seen it. Nothing like too crazy about it. It's it's almost like it's it's good because it doesn't have a lot of extra bells and whistles, and it just has very very strong characters and very strong relationship progression, uh, in in really really realistic ways. So that's pretty cool. Then Kill La Kill. Kill La Kill is one of the first anime I watched. Uh, when I actually started getting into it right after high school, which was ten years ago. I it just randomly occurred to, occurred to me earlier today that I have been out of high school for 10 years, which means it's been about 10 years since I've seen a Kill La Kill. I mean, my opinion of Kill La Kill back then probably wouldn't be any different from now, where I think this is an enjoyable series. It's very good. Um, it has that Gainax Imaishi staple of being a plot that's kind of dumb, honestly, but the way it executes itself the way it delivers on that plot it's so well done that you just kind of get caught up in the whole thing and you you come to you just kind of get beaten into admitting how great it is it's like it's it's stupid but it's so unashamed of itself and it's it's so proud of itself that you just can't help but appreciate it as well like the whole theme of the of like clothing and nudity representing freedom and oppression and stuff like that it's like like on paper it's ridiculous but it goes in so many different different directions and it's so fleshed out that it becomes awesome that being said i did think it was maybe a little too over the top there were some plot points in this series that progress maybe a little too fast for my liking like there would be some episodes i specifically remember there's an episode where like someone ends up taking senketsu or something and it's like oh no ryuko is not going to have senkets anymore that's going that's like the worst thing that could ever happen and then it just gets resolved immediately in the next episode and it's like I appreciate how fast-paced this story is. There's a lot that goes on in this series in just 26 episodes. But at the same time, there are some things that just <laughs> go a little too fast. It's like, breathe, everybody, please. 
So that's that that that's what held it back for me a little bit. Although maybe if I watched it nowadays, I might appreciate it a little more because I might appreciate its completely absurd humor a little bit more. I did appreciate it at the time, though. Nui Harime still one of the best villains of all time and did nothing wrong. But I will s- uh, actually. It's either a high, it's either a very low A or a very high B. I think I'll give it a B for now. Actually, uh, you know, given how much I remember Mako and and Nui, I think I'm actually going to put it an A because I remember those characters so well, and I'm so appreciative of of them now that yeah, I think I would. I I really do think that if nothing else, if I watch Kill a Kill nowadays, I would like it a lot more, and I would at least consider it an A. So yeah. All right, Odd Taxi. This show absolutely freaking slaps. This is the bomb. Um, definitely one of the best anime to come out this decade. At this point, it is the front runner for best original series we have had this decade. Odd Taxi is just a masterclass of storytelling and presentation. I don't want to say why presentation specifically, but... Holy shit, are there some mind-blowing twists in this series. It's not an intense drama or anything, which is also what makes the story so great. It's so easy to just sink yourself into the atmosphere and into the world and into the, the lives of these characters. But the way they all kind of twist around and also converge at all these different points... Um, with this, you know, vague, mysterious plot that's going around that's kind of connecting everything. It's so fascinating. This series is absolutely amazing. So, yeah, really, really one of the best anime that has come out this decade. 86. This came out around the same time, and I am less enthusiastic about it. Um, I, It's a series that I was always uh, cognizant of because I would keep track of the the light novel and manga sales charts or whatever and i would always see 86 on this and i would like huh huh there's a there's a series called 86 it's just a number which i thought was funny because it's we're, we're in the age of ooh oh come on bullshit oh that's fucked up i saw a fly descend onto the glue paper i have right over this lamp and then it just flew off like nothing happened that's some bullshit right there get the fuck over here Ugh. oh how'd i miss fucked up i just i have just encountered the world's strongest fly anyway 86 um we're in the age of uh, super long light novel titles that take up the entire cover so I thought 86 was a good counter to that. And it, was, and it always made me interested. I'm like, this series is probably doing some things different. Which is true. 86 is quite different from a lot of night, light novels that exist nowadays. Um, and I appreciate that. That also being said, I don't think it's all that good. <laughs> Basically, my take on 86 is that someone read Elie Wiesel's Night one time and was like, what if this but anime... Because that's essentially what it is. It's like anime holocaust. And there are interesting elements to that, of course. But it handles serious themes like the political aspects. Just very, very comically one-dimensional. Like, um, this entire country has um, essentially separated a different part of itself, a different part of its country... And, and literally deemed its citizens to be non-human so they can do whatever they want with them. And there's only one person in the entire, you know, country who thinks that this is wrong, which is the main character. She's just so noble and just. And, I mean, like, on a basic level, there's nothing really wrong with how 86 is written. But just kind of when you zoom out and get the full picture of it, it's like, all right, this is a little bit... It, 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 it runs a little bit shallow, but there are still some good things about it, some interesting things about it. Some some surprisingly good character moments, um, especially in the second half. I do remember some things being uh, really good, like this whole episode where, not, not even, maybe, I don't know if it was a whole episode, but there was a, there was a long scene involving this, like, sentient uh, mechanical dog that 
some of the these people keep around, and it was like really, really well done. So there are there are good things about Horimiya, but not Horimiya. I just looked at Horimiya and said that immediately. Sorry. There are good things about eighty six. I just don't think it's that good, and I still haven't seen the second season. Because Sinra specifically turned me off to watching 86 by saying that there was a really annoying character introduced in the second half. And a lot of the good things that happened in the first half are, like, undone, essentially. So I'm like, well, that's a bunch of bullshit. So I have not gotten around to that yet, unfortunately. I, I It'll probably be fine, though. I'll just say 6 out of 10, not really the best thing ever, but it... It has its moments. I can I can at least see why people like it, and I don't have a huge problem with it. All right, here's Fate Zero. Fate Zero is really, really good, really great action series, which with with also a lot of a uh, talky, wordy drama, but it handles both elements really, really well. Has a very, very simple plot in premise, but is a uh, quite complex in how it's executed. It's a it's a death game of sorts, so it's a, it's one of those it's a it's a Junie Tyson, some might say. Um, but the way it goes about with the with the different participants is very very interesting. Lots of very specific rules that have to be explained, and I know some people take offense to maybe some of the expository scenes. I don't. I think they're fine. And overall, the way the series ends is just freaking awesome. And let's not forget that Kiritsugu cheated on his wife. So I would put Fate Zero in A tier. Yeah, sorry for faking you out there. It's an A tier series. Um, although second second half would be... It would definitely contain... You know what? Maybe I would put this in S tier. I do like it more than Finland, Finland Saga. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll just leave it there. Especially since we got the Kiritsugu memes out of it. So, I gotta do it. But don't let that distract you from the fact that Kiritsugu cheated on his wife. That's what that's gonna be the name of this tier. <laughs> Alright, Mushoku Tensei. I have talked about Mushoku Tensei a lot in my different outlets, either on this channel, on the Tokyo Podfathers, on Twitter... I fucking hate this series. I'm not elaborating on, on, on it. The thing with Mushoku Tensei is it's like it's almost like it's like Kanye West's music at this point. At this point, you just have to be on one side or the other, and if you're on wh whichever side, then everybody knows why. You don't need to explain yourself. Just whatever. But people like to argue about it. Anyway, as if it's going to change anything. And I'm fucking tired of it. I'm tired of arguing about Mushoku Tensei. I'm tired of seeing this series. I'm, I, I, I hate that it exists. I don't like it at all. It's terrible and bad. Fuck you if you like Mushoku Tensei. <laughs> I don't give a shit. This is Berserk. This is, um, I'm going to say haven't watched, which is technically true. I have not seen Berserk. I have read The Golden Age of Berserk. It is very good. But that's about it. Ore Gairu. I've only seen the first season of Ore Gairu. I kind of don't want to watch any more of it because I did not like the first season whatsoever. I was, I was told for years and years that Ore Gairu would be totally something that I would like. It's something that friends have recommended to me for years, and I watched it eventually, specifically for them, and I'm like. This is a bunch of shit that I don't like, actually. I hate the really dumb, tropey characters. I hate how it's trying to be wordy and deep, kind of like Monogatari, but it just feels so shallow. Did not like it at all. I thought it was bad, so no thank you. Summertime Render. Okay, th I do need a new tier. Summertime Render I haven't finished. Shit. I, 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 I hate how this website still has garbage controls after, like, five years. Alright, so... I haven't finished Summertime Render. The first episode is absolutely fantastic, and I've just heard nothing but great things about it 
throughout the entire series. Like when this was airing, Sinris on my friend Sinris from the podcast would be every, every single week just be like, "How is Summertime Render still this good? How is it still?" How does it still have all these crazy plot twists 20 episodes in when every episode seems to have some kind of interesting plot twist? It's I seen the first eight episodes or so I seen the first eight episodes or so. It is wild. It constantly leaves you on your feet, on your toes, constantly guessing. There's just so much going on with this and it's so well done. This is a this is an absolutely great thriller. But unfortunately, I haven't finished it, so I really need to do that. But I'm sure when I do finish it, assuming the ending isn't, like, completely terrible, it will at least be an A-tier series for me. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to jump cut. Ugh, I went upstairs and I got pissed off. Anyway, so yeah, there's Summertime Render. Oh my god, this is in the top 100. Of course it is, because it's fucking Reddit. Eminence and Shadow, I have videos on this channel explaining why this shit is the worst fucking thing I've ever seen. This is... Oh, this isn't even dropped. No, sorry. This is just absolutely fucking abominable. Because I didn't drop it. I watched the entire first season. Half... Mostly against my will. Well, no, it wasn't against my will. I just had to... I just had an axe to grind, and I just felt like I needed to get it out there. But... God, it's a terrible series. Again, I have videos on this channel. If you want to know why, just look them up. They're not hard to find. And for some reason, this is the one thing that I've gotten the most disagreements on. I, I don't see why people like this so much. I don't see why people think... I don't see why people have a problem with what I have to say about it, if nothing else. Because I'm right, and everyone else is wrong. That's how I feel about it. That's legitimately how I feel about this. I'm right, and everyone else is wrong. Spike's family. I haven't finished this actually. Although maybe I'll just put it in B tier, kind of like eighty six. Cause Spike's family is fine. Um, yeah, I'll put it there. Actually, wait a minute. What am I talking about? I've seen most of the first two seasons. Oh, oh wait, there's a third season now. Whatever. Anyway, the thing with Spike's family is that it has a very, very good premise. I just think that it repeats itself maybe a little too much there are some there are quite a few episodes where nothing really progresses in terms of the story because there is a story in this series and i think that's important just kind of a, a lot of like wasteful bits like a lot of a lot of skits or half episodes where it can be fun to watch but it doesn't do anything to actually develop the characters so that's always been my thing with spy x family but on the surface it's still a fun series it's still a very well presented series, so I have nothing really against it. It's just not not quite as good as I have wanted it to be at times. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. That's next up. Um, reincarnated as a slime is a very very good series. I have enjoyed it quite a bit over the years. I haven't seen, although I, I'm I'm very far behind it now. I'm only halfway through the second season, but it's a series that. When it first came out, I almost watched it just, like, absentmindedly because I was thinking, I don't want to think about anything. I just want to watch something at, just for the sake of watching it, for for no other reason. And I just want to, uh... I, I, I just wanted to have a turn-your-brain-off experience. But then what I realized is that this is actually a very well-thought-out series with very, very enjoyable characters and despite how silly the premise might seem at first glance, it's actually quite clever. So this ended up being way more enjoyable than I expected, and that's always how it's been. Every t every single time I come to reincarnate as a slime, I'm thinking, I'll just watch a couple episodes and not think about it. And then I end up watching five episodes and think, wow, that was really good. <laughs> that was a great anime that I just watched. So I'll put it in B tier, although it could actually go up to A tier. That being said, I haven't heard great things about the newest season, so that's a little unfortunate, but who knows. This is um, Tatami Galaxy. This is definitely something that I need to watch, because it's something that I probably will like. Whatever, I haven't really heard that much about it, but whatever I have heard about it just seems like 
something I would enjoy. And, of course, a lot of people whose tastes I respect really like this series. So there's that as well. Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju. This series fucking rules. This is an A tier. No, sorry, this is a this is a Kiritsugu cheated on his wife tier series. Um, the first season of this, dude. I'm so proud of myself. I didn't really have a lot of resources when I was first getting into anime. I was watch. I was on my anime list, of course, and the only way I was determining how to which seasonals I was going to watch in winter 2016 was just my anime list score. So I noticed this one had a somewhat higher score than most other things. So I just watched it uh, without anyone recommending it to me or anything. And I realized I was in for a really, really special series. I absolutely adored that first episode and that entire first season. I still believe to be truly perfect. 10 out of 10 story writing. It is so freaking good. The second season, I don't think is quite so airtight and perfect. And the overall series as a result, I think, falls apart a little bit towards the end. The second season has some plot threads that are just kind of like there. They don't really get a, a explained. It, it tries to deepen itself, but... Me, not not with a whole lot of meaning, if that makes any sense. It probably doesn't. I'm trying to just explain this real quickly. Um, but I just kind of had some issues with the second season, especially with the way it ended. I feel like it had a very deflated, underwhelming ending. But overall, this is still an incredible series. I still think the overall experience, if nothing else, that first half is absolutely deserving of a, of a 10 out of 10. And the second half is fine. It, it was still good. Um, so yeah, so it is definitely top tier. All right, Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man, um, Chainsaw Man's really good. I really like the first season. I really like the way they adapted the manga. And I have read, at this point, it's less than half of the manga. I've only read like 70 chapters. So I haven't quite gotten through part one. I still don't know some of the most important things that happen in Chainsaw Man. Um, the only things I know about the manga beyond what I've read are that there's some chick with black hair. I don't know her name. I've seen the word femcell be used to describe her. Don't tell me anything, by the way. I'm just, I'm just musing. Don't actually explain. Uh, oh, that girl's name is blue, and she does blue. I, I, I don't want to hear that. I, I don't care. I like that I don't know about this. Um, and the other thing is that she sings a maximum the hormone song in one of the chapters, which is genuinely one of the funniest things I have ever seen in any piece of media. And so I, I know that uh, Fujimoto is absolutely there for me. He, he is my guy. I'm giving Chainsaw Man an A. Very enjoyable series. Um, back to the anime. I love the way it was adapted. I love the way it looks. I love the way they really made an effort to flesh out the atmosphere and the characters, slow down the pacing. Very, very bold move to do that since Chainsaw Man is so chaotic and fast-paced as a manga. But I thought they absolutely nailed it. Um, I really like it a lot. The different EDs they had for every episode was super great. Yeah, just, just, just a really, really terrific anime presentation overall. Like, I've genuinely said that this might be the, like, highest quality TV anime I have ever seen so yeah um oh and some of the characters are fun Den denji's a denji's a pretty all right mc but power is my girl i i fucking love power so yeah uh cyberpunk edge runners is this next one i watched that last year and it was a hell of a time i loved it it is 10 episodes of crazy hectic extremely violent um, action. It's Trigger going all out on their nonsense. Trigger calling back to their, their violent days at Gainax, oftentimes. Like, this is such a violent and graphic series, but I absolutely loved that. Um, I said that uh, when watching this anime, I said that one of my favorite things in anime is when they use extreme violence as a joke. <laughs> And that is absolutely what cyberpunk is. Like, it, it's a very, it, it can be a very dark series. It can be a very uh, dramatic and hard to watch series. But at the same time, there's that grittiness that also comes around to being a joke. 
and I love that about it as well. So, the classic case of how a series can disengage its audience by still just being itself. Um, yeah, really great themes as well. Great story overall. Good character development. Yeah, just, just well, actually, I didn't love the characters for the most part. A lot of the characters were just there, except for Rebecca. Um, Rebecca is not only a fun gremlin character, but they did the best thing ever. It's the the whoever was responsible for this is the smartest person in the entire world. Where they got um, Tomoso Kuroyawa to voice Rebecca, who is the voice of like Kumiko and Fos. So she's known for having this very natural sounding voice, and now she gets to voice some evil <laughs> fucking maniac who's just shooting people and swearing at them constantly. And it was it was the most hilarious thing ever. So she absolutely uh, made the show for me but there are a lot of other great things about it as well so yeah a tier for sure this is wow this is top 100 recency bias much uh lycoris recoil i've described this as the ideal summer blockbuster anime the the perfect seven out of ten this is a series that is quite good it has a lot of good things about it um it's not the most inventive series or anything. It's not going to blow you away. But there's also not a whole lot that's seriously wrong with it. The plot works for what it is. If you dig into it, then you realize, okay, this doesn't make a whole, whole lot of sense. I've done an entire podcast about this on, on Topod. Um, but I like that it presents itself with a lot of heart. It's, it's a very well-made anime. Very, it was. I want to believe it was Cloverworks, but Cloverworks is kind of attached to a1 it has a very a1 pictures feel to it which is that it's it's kind of mass produced this is also this also applies to 86 where it has these kind of generic visuals but it's colorful it's well animated the character designs are very good they actually i, I say it feels very much like a1 pictures as other stuff but fortunately i don't think the characters in this quite have the a1 pictures face um, the, the Sword Art Online phase is what I mean to say, because that was definitely something that bothered me in 86, where I'm, I like the character designs of 86, but they all look like they come from Sword Art Online, and it bothers me. Um, 86 had very, very good visual uh, direction, though. I, I, I should have said that at the time. But I forgot. Like a Rico, not so much, but it does have better character designs, and it's overall just more fun. That was the best. That was the best thing about it. It was just a plain fun series. Not a whole lot to really say about it, but it was fine. Alright, next is going to be Bochi the Rock. Bochi the Rock is definitely one of my favorite series. This is absolutely fantastic. The cast in this is so good. The way this show depicts themes of anxiety, um, just social awkwardness in general, is absolutely fantastic. It definitely feels like it was made by people who get it, but also people who are willing to kind of laugh about it. Because I, I laughed about it, I laughed along with it, and I'm also like, yeah, that is what it's like. Uh, Ryo Yamada is one of the greatest characters of all time. She's just that perfect, uh, I don't know, that, that perfect character that exists in quartets and is just, she always just does the right thing at the right time, if that makes sense. She just always has the perfect line or, or quote for something. She's both profoundly deep, but also the funniest character, and she's just she's just great. She is just my kind of person, my kind of character. So yeah, uh, definitely better than this. Uh, is it better than Odd Taxi? That's a tough one. God, <laughs> that is actually really hard. How do I have this ranked on Analyst? Let's see. Oh, I have notifications on Analyst. I don't know who these people are. Look at this. Look at look how blank my any list activity is. <laughs> That's sad. Uh, did I even put Bochi the Rock in my... Oh, I did. Yeah, it's right here. I put it just above Odd Taxi. Wow. I mean, you, I, I hope you can forgive me for not remembering my the exact order of my favorites right there. So, yeah. Sorry, Odd Taxi. You have been slightly dethroned. Where did I put Rakugo? Oh, I put Rakugo way above all this stuff. But that was the first, that's the first season of Rakugo specifically, so that doesn't count. Alright, next up is Steins Gate, and all of you guys have to move over, because Steins Gate is the absolute best anime of all time. It is the most perfect anime of all time. Mayuri Shina is literally my wife. Um, yeah, 10 out of 10, masterpiece. Do I have to say anything else? This also includes Steins Gate Zero. 
Now, I'll admit, Steins Gate Zero does not have a perfect plot like the first season does, like the original series does. But I've always said that if nothing else, Steins Gate Zero doesn't really take anything away from the original. I don't think it does anything to harm the original. It deepens it, if nothing else. Still gives me some great character moments, and it was the most fun I ever ever had while watching anime keeping up with science gate zero weekly doing a bi-weekly podcast with my friends about it keeping up with the episode discussions about it, everything my i started my youtube channel when when science gate zero was coming out that's how important this was to me all this stuff just everything about science gate zero and it being out and just kind of my life at that time it was just it was just great it was unforgettable I love it. I'm super nostalgic for it. That's why I have it rated as a 10 out of 10 because, you know what, maybe maybe in my heart of hearts I know that it's not that good, but I had so much more fun watching it than anything else I've ever seen. So <laughs> what can I say beyond that? ReZero. This one is tough to rate because I have very mixed feelings about ReZero. Um... I really liked it at first. In fact, I probably would still say that I liked the first season a lot. Second season, first half of it I did like. Second half of it I did not like at all. And it really put into, put into perspective how I feel about the entire series. And hang on one second. Sorry. It really put into perspective how I feel about the entire series. What I do like about it and what I don't like about it. My thing on ReZero is that I think that it's I, – I, I, I kind of like the hooks of it, but I don't like the entire thing. That probably doesn't really explain anything. But basically, my take on ReZero, and this is something I've been both flamed for and also have been told that it's the most perfect and accurate opinion of ReZero ever – my opinion of it is that I think it's really interesting when Subaru is dying. Because what I love about ReZero is that it sets up these absolutely insane, impossible conflicts where every time you – like, whenever something happens, it's just like, all right, how the hell is this going to get resolved? Because the main character is pretty much powerless, and he goes up against some insane threats, and he can't do anything about them directly. So – it's really interesting seeing that and seeing the the anxiety, the fear that comes with these conflicts. That's what ReZero does really, really well. It sets up this absolutely crushing, this skull-crushing atmosphere at times in the wake of some, some of these bad things happening. And it's really, really great to watch. That being said, actually watching these conflicts get resolved is often very boring because it usually just go it usually just involves a lot of talking, not just a lot of talking, but a lot of exposition. And it's not often delivered in the most engaging way. So that's why I really took offense to season 2 because season 2, especially the second half, is just like constant fucking explanation and it's like, "Oh my god." Every single mechanic of this fantasy world does not need to be explained for this plot to work. I promise you, you can cut some of this down. Holy shit. And the best part about season two is that they made every episode 29 minutes. No, not 24 minutes with OPs and EDs. No, 29 minutes, usually without OPs and EDs, because they just have to talk that fucking much. And Jesus Christ, did it get on my nerves. So that's kind of how I feel about ReZero in general. I have heard that the later arcs are going to be really good. I've heard that Season 3 is going to silence the haters. I've also heard that a lot about Sword Art Online. Alicization is where Sword Art Online gets good, guys. Progressive is where Sword Art Online gets good, guys. Alternative is where everything gets good, guys. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to put ReZero in B tier. Um, it could go up. It could also go down. That's just kind of how it is. I'm very, very mixed on it. There's a, there's a lot more that I could say about ReZero, but I'm trying not to spend like 30 minutes on every single episode, be, uh, on every single anime I talk about, because there's a lot of anime i got to talk about. Boku Yabai, The Dangers in My Heart. I haven't watched all of this. I've seen like half of it, or not even half of it. Um, 
it's about this weird incel kid who's somewhat who's got like a tsundere crush on this super hot chick um it's honestly really really weird and kind of uncomfortable in the beginning maybe not necessarily uncomfortable i just found it weird and just not very interesting in the beginning but i've also heard it develops into a really really cute and adorable romance so i guess i'll take people at their word for that and say that i'll get around to finishing it someday i don't like it so much right now but you know i just haven't gotten to the good parts i guess so there's that but yeah Perfect Blue. If you haven't seen Perfect Blue, you should watch Perfect Blue. It is one of the best films of all time. It is one of the best things of all time. It is really, really freaking good. One of the most satisfying things I've ever experienced when watching media is the end of Perfect Blue. Because there's a very, very crazy plot twist at the end. And I predicted it. I sa- I, 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 I predicted it, or at least pieced it together as it was happening. And, like... It was something that I just like kind of thought about, and then the more the longer the scene went on, the more I realized how right I was and how crazy and fucked up it was. And it, I'm just like, oh my god, no way, dude! It was so freaking cool. Um, yeah, Perfect Blue, just absolutely great, great movie, great, um, really really dark take on the uh, entertainment industry in general. Um, really abstract but in a very cool way just a fantastically done film it's a it's a staple it's a it's a masterpiece everyone loves perfect blue for a good reason oshinoko i haven't finished this uh i probably will because akasaka aka genius mangaka does not miss ever i don't fucking care what you think about the manga or whatever i haven't heard anything about the manga just i just hear people complain about it and i'm like they're probably wrong (laughs) these people are probably wrong um i watched the first episode which was super long, and it was fine. I haven't watched watched it beyond that, though. Um, one big reason for that is because the OP is the worst fucking thing I've ever heard, and I had to hear it so much throughout the last year, and I uh, really don't want to hear it ever again. So that's really been putting me off. Code Geass, I haven't watched. I should, but I haven't. Samurai Champloo, I haven't watched. I should. But I haven't. I probably would really like it, though. From whatever I have, from what I have seen and heard about Shan- Samurai Champloo, it would totally be my thing. Shinsekai Yori. Um, this was a very, very good series. I like this a lot. So Shinsekai Yori is um. Let's see. How do I talk about this one? I don't know. It's it's kind of it's not necessarily an adventure. But it does take place in this kind of strange world. It, it takes place in this post-apocalyptic world, but it's like a thousand years in the future where um, humans have developed um, psychic powers, which is what caused the world to be destroyed in the first place. So now society has been completely rewritten, essentially, where now there are all these specific rules. There are these different kind of creatures that exist in this place. And it's one of those... It's one of those mechanical fantasy series that I think is really interesting to, to, to dig into, assuming you're willing to give it the time. I think the world is interesting, so I like that, um, and I liked it through the end. It has a very, very well-told story, in my opinion. One that's very mysterious, but what I what I really like about it is that the mysteries don't linger for too long. Like, they'll they'll introduce a mystery, they'll introduce something vague, but within a couple episodes, they'll explain it. So it's not like you're going the entire series where some plot twist gets revealed and they're like, oh, remember this vague thing from, like, 20 episodes ago that you forgot by now? So it's actually pretty easy to follow along with, but it is very complex and still pulls off some crazy surprises, especially at the end. So, um, yeah, it's a very, very good series, I think. I I actually watched all of this in one sitting. I actually th- think this is the series that I... I think this is the fastest I've ever watched a 24-episode series. Because I watched all of this basically in one sitting. I watched it in less than 24 hours. I used to do this thing like every six months where I would challenge myself to watch a 24-episode show in one in. in a, a 24, or rather, a two-core series within 24 episodes, or t- with, within 24 hours, I mean. So that was what I did for Shinsekai Yori, and I think I completed it in, like, 16 hours or even less than that. 
So really enjoyed that. And then my computer broke immediately after, so that was hilarious. But I liked it. Uh, I think, yeah, I'd put it right below Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Good series. Not great characters, though. That's, that's very, very boring characters. Kind of boring presentation. The story and the storytelling is definitely what carries it. And also look at the soundtrack. The soundtrack was really good. This is Haruhi Suzumiya. I haven't seen it, but there is a funny story about this because there was a podcast that I did in two, in uh, 2019 where it was uh, our, it was our seasonal first impressions episode as we always do, except um, it was Bex and I, and we decided to do an April Fools thing by having the first episodes of shows that came out in spring 2009, ten years ago. One of those was the second season or whatever of Haruhi, which includes the Endless Eight. So I actually have seen an episode of Endless Eight as a joke. And I haven't seen anything beyond that. So, uh, yeah, aside from the the God Knows performance, I guess, because God Knows is the best song ever. All right, Free Rent, I haven't finished, but I have gotten about halfway through it, and I have liked it a lot. Free Rent is a really, really good series. I dare say it kind of lives up to the hype that it has. Is it still number one on my enemy list? Probably. That thing got really far ahead of FMAB. Um, yeah, it's still it's still significantly higher than FMAB. That shit, this shit is never moving. This is going to be number one forever now. So that's cool, I guess. Yeah, free run is good. Um, sorry, that's the Royals game. What am I looking at? Yeah, free run's good. I've enjoyed the characters quite a bit, uh, but I'm, and I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it in the second half when we when I actually find that uh, that green haired goth chick that I keep retweeting art of because she is the hottest character I have ever seen. All right, here is Apothecary Diaries. I haven't finished this. But I'm also tempted to put it in A tier anyway because I have enjoyed it so much. I have absolutely loved my time with Apothecary Diaries. However much I've watched it, I've only seen a few episodes, but Mau Mau is one of the most fun characters I have seen in a while. Uh, just an absolutely fantastic main character with the right amount of smarts and also attitude without feeling like there's too much of either. Like, like I, I don't, like I don't know how anybody can hate Mau Mau. I haven't seen a single person not adore Mau Mau, and I think that says a lot. She's just such a fantastic character who totally carries her series, and it's great. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Death Note. Crazy enough, I have not seen Death Note. I know, <laughs> I know. That's hilarious. How have I not seen Death Note? That's the one anime that everybody's seen. I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> so there's that. I'll tell you what, though. I really love Maximum the Hormone. So there's that. One Piece, haven't seen. Too too much, too long, I don't know. Psychopaths. Um, for the record, I'm only gonna we're only gonna be talking about the first two seasons of Psychopaths, because that's all I've seen. I haven't even seen the first movie of it. Um, although some might say that I should only talk about the first season of Psychopaths. Psychopaths is a very, very weird thing. It's basically the Star Wars of anime now, where everyone remembers the original the original one you know one it was good and then it kind of went off and other people started doing it and it just it it it, it sucked like psychopath season one is a solid dystopian sci-fi fantasy anime um it's it's actually more of an action crime thriller it's like csi but in this really weird um sort of um sort of place where Japan has totally redone itself. Hang on. There's now this uh, this cybersecurity system called Sybil that essentially governs anything, e everything. So that's how the whole thing is run. And basically, uh, this series exposes the flaws in this system, the flaws in the design of it, and just why a country can't really operate in this kind of way, I suppose. And it's very interesting. My only thing about Psychopaths is that I just didn't th think it was actually that fun to watch. I didn't really like the characters necessarily. And the story was, I guess, interesting, but not something that I was all that enthusiastic about. It just wasn't necessarily my thing. And then you get to the second season where they just throw all nuance out the window and just make everything fucking stupid. Um, it's really bad. <laughs> I'll just say Psychopaths is mid 
in general, but there are definitely good things about it. it. Basically, just just watch the first season and then ignore everything else about it because I haven't even heard good things about season three or the other movies they did with it. It's a total mess of a franchise. All right, you didn't see that, but... Wait, isn't it recording now? All right, you didn't see that, but I went and took a very long bathroom break because I really needed that. Are the Royals winning? What the fuck? I'm closing this. That's some bullshit. All right, Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Haven't seen it, but I probably should. Dragon Ball Z, this is kind of in the Yu Yu Hakusho tier where it's technically something I have seen. I have seen a fair amount of Dragon Ball Z, but it was as a little kid. I can't really tell you anything about it nowadays. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just say haven't watched just for simplicity. Hibike Euphonium. I am literally re-watching this right now. Here. You hear this? No, you don't. It's, it's frozen. All right, there you go. You hear that? That's literally Hibike Euphonium open in my pot player right now because I'm watching it. Uh, Hibike is a great series. I actually talked about this in more extensive detail in my Kyoto animation tier list. So you know what? Just go watch that. But it's it's good. A tier. Naruto. Naruto is a top 100 anime. That's cool. Um... I'm actually unsure of how to rank this because if we're talking about Naruto as the anime, then it's worth mentioning that Naruto has lots of problems as an anime, namely in that it has a whole lot of filler, um, especially in Shippuden where they decide to make the war arc literally half the entire series. I'm not entirely sure why they did that. I haven't actually technically finished Shippuden because I, I just gave up at some point. I'm like, like the manga was already over. So I'm like, I don't need this anymore. I don't need to pretend to care about this anymore. Um, but recently I've gone back and reread the manga and rekindled my uh, appreciation for this series and reminded myself of why I liked it so much as a kid because it's actually quite good. So, Naruto manga, fantastic. Naruto anime has its moments. I'll say mid just for simplicity because I honestly cannot decide what I'm going to do with this. So, yeah, I'll I'll just I'll just put it there. Konosuba is one of my favorite anime of all time. Do I have? Hang on, I got this open. So that that that's Konosuba for you. Um, good good series. I like it a lot. I think I've talked about it enough. Uh, but it's my yeah second or third favorite series of all time, only behind uh, Steins Gate, maybe behind Kaguya-sama, maybe behind something else that. I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't seen yet. I'm, I'm sure it's on here, though. It is definitely on here. I saw it. All right, next is Psyche K. That's a bit of a throwback right here. Psyche K is eight years old. I can't believe it. I still haven't seen it. I saw half of it, though, and I liked it. It was very funny, but I got to go back and <laughs> rewatch it. Um, nice, uh, fun, like, quirky, uh, quirky comedy. I guess, about a guy, basically about Mob, but if he was actually, like, aware of a lot of different stuff and wasn't just, you know, Mob. As it, mob is if he was some kind of sarcastic punk who really liked coffee jelly. That's uh, what it is. So I thought it was great. Is this your lie in April? This is your lie in fucking April. This is the worst anime of all time. I fucking hate your lie in April so much, dude. Holy shit. This is the reverse Ava, where I actually watched it around the same time as I watched Ava, and I absolutely despised everything about it. I hated its stupid, pretentious story, its stupid, pretentious characters who were constantly trying to make these really deep quotes this entire anime is so i'm 14 and this is deep it's just so fucking ridiculous all these characters 
or they, 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 they try to act so deep and they're always so emotional. And it's like, bro, you're in high school. These issues that you have are going to get better. I, I assure you, like, this is not <laughs> going to be your life forever. I really like the entire time I was watching this show. I'm like, oh, my God, this is exactly me when I was in my angsty high school phase. But I got out of it. So getting out of that phase made me realize how ridiculous it was. And just seeing it secondhand, I'm, I, I felt embarrassed. I hated watching this anime. Like every minute of it, I hated watching it. I honestly want to go back to it just so I could see if I was really that... If I really feel that way about it still. Because God was this painful to get through for me. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to get back into it because I don't want to watch it ever again. I hated it. So, yeah. All right, Bacano. Bacano is awesome. Um, really, it's a fairly short series. It's only like 12 episodes or so. 12 or 13. And it tells us... It, it, it did a really interesting thing where it adapted this light novel but scattered around its different plot threads so that way it's more um, consistent time-wise. So it's one of those series where you got you have a lot of individual stories, but they all kind of they all kind of work in tandem together and then converge at the very end, which is uh, pretty cool. Some really fun characters. Um, Isaac and Miria are still the greatest couple that anime has ever seen. Um, yeah, the entire series I think is great. I wish there was a little bit more of it though. Like it, 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 it's fun, but at the end you're just like, all right, now what? I want, I want, I want more of this. I want more of these characters. I want more of this story. And then it just doesn't have. They, they, they never made season two of Bacano for whatever reason. I'm still hopeful that it'll happen eventually because <laughs> everything else is getting revived nowadays. So why not Bacano? It's gotta happen someday. Monster, haven't seen. Uh, Higurashi, have not seen. Cowboy Bebop. I had the ver had a very weird strategy of watching this, where I just kind of watched an episode randomly, like every other month or so. It took me like three years, but it was great. It was enjoyable. It's a great series of uh, individual vignettes. Well, not entirely individual. There are some two-part episodes in there, but... Um, the characters are really enjoyable, and they go around and do all this fun stuff. You, you, you know what Cowboy Bebop is at this point. It's a it's a tier. It's fun. I I well actually, I think I'd put it in high B tier. Yeah, I think I'd put it there. I didn't like completely love it or anything. Um, some episodes are definitely better than others, but it's fun. It's definitely a fun series, and definitely one of those series where people who hate hate anime like it. So that that's nice. Good for them. All right, Tora Dora. This is a series I got to revisit someday because when I first watched this all the way back in 2017, I absolutely adored it. I loved everything about it. I loved the characters. I loved all of them. I loved the whole story. I loved the presentation. I loved everything about this series, and I gave it a 10 out of 10. And I thought it was essentially the perfect rom-com. And nowadays I, he I see a lot of slander about Tora Dora, and I'm like... I think these people might be wrong about it. I should really revisit it, though, with the more detailed experience that I have with anime in general. Kind of seeing how Toradora perfected a lot of rom-com's most basic tropes and kind of seeing them done worse in other shows, it would probably give me a lot more appreciation for Toradora that I didn't quite have when I first watched it, even though I did love it a lot. But, yeah, Toradora... S tier. It's fantastic. If you don't like it, you're probably a bad person. Chihaya Fuyu, Chihaya Furu have not seen, despite all of my friends literally begging me to for years. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So we are talking about all of JoJo's in general in one in one go. That's a little bit difficult because JoJo feels like a different series sometimes with some parts. Because um, there are different parts of it and each part is a different story. Um, with a different with a different protagonist, usually in a different setting, and sometimes even different themes. Like, um, I think I think most of the parts of JoJo are just 
like adventure essentially but part four was much more let's see it was it wasn't so wide because it was in it was it it, it all took place in one particular area essentially and it was just more different characters getting introduced although i guess it was an adventure because they technically do go around and explore different things but um I mean, Jojo, what do I got to say about this? Like, you don't know what, you, you know what the hell Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is already. I personally, I, of course, think that some parts are better than others. And the only part that I think I truly love and would, like, really go back to to watch for fun would be part four. That being said, I haven't watched part six yet because Netflix decided to be stupid about it. So I haven't done that. I think overall... It's actually tough. I don't know if I should rate it an A or... I'm going to give it a B. Yeah, because honestly, there are some parts of this that are so great. Um, like, part three in general is... Part three is fine. It just goes on for so long. And it's so many, you know, just formulaic episodes, essentially. It, it drags. It really drags. Um, part five, I was actually really kind of disappointed with. Like, I... I thought part four essentially perfected Jojo at that point, or, or at least was the best version of Jojo to that point. And then part five felt like it was regression. Like it, it, it kind of went back to being just weekly episodes like, Oh, we're going to go to this place, but Oh no, the, the bad guy sent one of his goons at us. And now we got to fight him for three episodes. So I didn't really like part five that much. And uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like, there are better parts to JoJo that are still to be uh, seen by me, if nothing else. Maybe part six? Yeah. Bleach, haven't seen, despite people telling me to. Attack on Titan. This is a uh, tough series to talk about because there's so much to it and there's so much that changed about it over time. But I love that about it. I love how, <laughs> at first, I watched this because... It's kind of like what I was talking about with ReZero, where it just sets up this impossible conflict. I remember watching this for the first time and thinking, how in the world do the good guys win in this series? Like, the Titans are so large, they have so many strengths to them, it's so hard to kill one Titan at all. You know, humans have to had to invent this fucking crazy technology where they fight on wires using knives some crazy shit it's it's so cool um and by the end you're actually watching this really intricate political drama of sorts it, it goes in all these different directions that's very that are very unexpected as a story uh but actually really really well done i think overall i think attack on titan has a lot to say and i think it definitely did a lot more good than it did bad i would definitely put this in s tier i really enjoyed my time with attack on titan and it really has helped shape my life because i spent so much time with it it's one of the first anime i watched when getting into anime and seeing it evolve it's like this like you don't get this a lot with other stories stories don't change and, and and grow in the way that Attack on Titan did. Hyoka, I've talked about this a lot. I talked about this on my um, Kyoto Animation tier list. I dropped that shit. I don't like Hyoka. Ah, I say angrily. I say with authority. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of people pretending that Hyoka's good because oh my visuals, oh my kinemasu, oh my merry erotic fan art. Some the streets don't know that Mary has drawn a uh, new Dakimakura of um, of Jitanda, but I know because I'm smart and I know things. Tengen Tapa Gurren Lagen. That's a bad pronunciation of it, probably. Uh, Gurren Lagen. Good series, very much in the same vein as Kill La Kill because it's all the same people who made Kill La Kill, but seven years earlier. Um, one thing though, I don't like Kamina. That definitely that I actually I liked this series more as it went along. I didn't quite like it in the beginning because I really didn't like the characters that much. I thought Kamina was really annoying. He's a fine character. He's I always have to explain this. I Kamina's not a bad character. I just personally didn't like him because I don't like his personality, but he does serve a great purpose within the story. I get why he exists and I appreciate the way he kind of inspires Simone 
and all that stuff. That's fine. I just did not like him personally. Um, and everyone else is kind of like, whatever. Like, Simone is fine as a main character. Yoko's fine. Um, Nia, when we get to her, though, she is a cinnamon roll, and she was definitely my favorite character in the series. And yeah, it's one. Of, it's like I said about Kill la Kill. It's it's stupid. The core of its story is so stupid. It's like Max Shonen power of friendship bullshit. But it's so it's so proud of itself for being that, and it takes it to levels that have never been be- seen before or since, unless you were specifically referencing Gurren Lagann, which is a lot of stuff nowadays. So it's great. It's iconic. Um... I might say, uh, nah, it's not better than the Kill a Kill, because I like the characters of Kill a Kill better. Non Non Biori, haven't seen. Welcome to the NHK, haven't seen. Uh, is this, this looks like Railgun, haven't seen. Madoka, this is also something I'm rewatching, and I'm, I'm almost done with the rewatch, and it is quite good. Um,. I don't really have too much to say about it. Madoka is a series that you know about already, so I don't think i got to explain what it is, but I would give it an A tier, putting it below Hibi K. I'm also re-watching it because I, I need to see Rebellion. I still haven't seen that, so that's kind of why I'm doing that. Because they're finally doing the Rebellion sequel. After 10 years or so, they're finally doing Rebellion 2. After so long and a shitty gotcha game that ruined my life in between. Long story about that. I have notifications on Discord. From who? From what? What? Okay, VTuber service. I don't care. Ping Pong the Animation. Great story about um, about having talent and what to do with your life with that talent and stuff like that. It's really good. But my controversial opinion is that I have never liked the visual aesthetic of ping pong. It's just, I get it. I get it. I kind of appreciate it. But holy shit, does it just look terrible at a lot of the time. It's just, it's too janky oftentimes. But still tells a very, very good story. And that's what's most important at the end of the day. I haven't seen it in a while, though. I would like I'd like to revisit that. We're, I mean, I'm now at the point where a lot of this stuff I haven't seen in five plus years, and that's actually kind of depressing to me because I've kind of forgotten what made some of this stuff so good. I need to I need to rehabilitate myself by rewatching all this stuff. I just got to sit down and zap my brain with it. Spice and Wolf haven't seen. Uh, this is Unlimited Blade Works or. Fate Stay Night, whatever, haven't seen it either way. Gintama, haven't seen it. Mushishi, haven't seen it. Bakemono Gatari, or just the Monogatari series in general. Yeah, this, this is just Monogatari in general. All right, Monogatari, kind of like JoJo. Some parts are better than others, but I still think that overall the parts are good. Uh, like the worst part is Nisei, which I think is just all right. And mainly my complaints about it are just that. It doesn't do a whole lot to really add to the series, aside from giving us Kaiki. And maybe, you know, Araragi's sisters, if you really care, if you really enjoy them. I kind of didn't, but it's still fine. Uh, the best parts of Monogatari are absolutely masterpieces. Hitagi End is a 10 out of 10 arc. Holy shit. Like, second season in general. Second season is where they, you know, take the characters that they've... You know that that have already been introduced and all that. They're like we already kind of know what they're about and what's going on with them, and they really up the ante with uh just what's going on. They really they add stakes to the drama essentially, and it's it's really compelling. But I love its visual style. Um, it's why I've always said that Akiyuki Shinbo and Shin, and Studio Shaft are like my favorites in anime, although maybe not so much nowadays. But it's uh, it's it's just great. I love Monogatari a lot. I would, I would say high A. Yeah, not quite S. I'll also say I haven't seen beyond second season, including Hana Monogatari, and uh, Suki Monogatari. I have seen Kizu. I have seen Kizu, but it, Owari and um, Koyomi. Our, uh, Monogatari. I haven't seen that. All, all the basically everything that's come out f- 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 since Owari Monogatari, aside from Kizu, I haven't seen. So that's one thing. But I got to get back onto that because they're continuing it. They're they're coming back. Monogatari's coming back. 
Yay, and they're only going to sacrifice 70 animators to make that happen. We're finally getting off-season. Yay. What the fuck is this? I actually don't know what this is. Am I stupid for not knowing what this is? Open image, new tab. What is this? Oh, this is Sympho Gear. This, that's what this is. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I mean, I knew I hadn't seen it either way, but I just wanted to know at least what it was so I could acknowledge it. This is Nietzsche Joe. This is a good show. Some might say it's the best show of all time, which I would agree with. No comment. No further comments at this time. Uh, Assassination Classroom haven't seen. Full Metal Alchemist haven't seen. Believe it or not, I do own a. I not only own the first volume of the manga, but also I won an art book of uh, the artist. I forgot her name off the top of my head. I'm sorry, but yeah, I have an art book of uh, Full Metal Alchemist because uh, I won it in an R anime contest back in 2018 for uh, making a video. Yeah, so that's something I'm kind of proud of, not going to lie. This is uh, Wolf Children, haven't seen. Haikyuu, haven't seen, despite all my friends screaming at me to do so for several years. One Punch Man, I have seen. Um, I haven't seen the second season, and the reason for that is because I've read the manga, and my my thoughts on it were that the manga was that the manga really kind of fell off around that time. So it was kind of funny to me when people were freaking out about the staff change in season two and how ugly it looked. And I'm like, guys, this part of the manga sucks anyway. This is like the worst story content of the entire series because what happened is that One One Punch Man originated as a webcomic that one just made to fuck around with but it actually got popular so he started taking the series a little more seriously or the, he started taking the story a little more seriously and then Murata came along and said hey let's make this a real manga so they did that and as they went through the manga they started to expand on the original so the manga is just an adaptation of the webcomic but after the, uh, the what was the guy's name Boros the guy from the villain from season one. After that arc, they really started to branch out and do some stuff that the web comic didn't have, like the whole giant centipede thing. That wasn't in the web comic. They added that in the manga, and it was kind of cute at first reading this, but it's like, oh, it's diff different stuff is happening. But then it's like, oh my god, this is still going. Is this fucking arc ever going to end? This isn't the the, the whole the whole martial arts thing. Not that interesting. Not that funny. Kind of a waste of time. It, it it really felt like a lot of time wasting until they fi the, until they would finally get into uh, the Monster Association and the Goro arc or the Garo arc, sorry, which I haven't c completely read in the manga, but I have at least read the the Garo fight in the manga, and holy fucking shit! <laughs> I mean, I read that in the web comic in like 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 this is how much they branch out. Okay, I read the Garo fight in the web comic in 2015. And they didn't actually get to that in, in the manga until 2022, or maybe 21. It was very, it's it's a very recent thing that has happened in the web, in the One Punch Man manga. And I'm like, how the fuck did it take them that long, dude? <laughs> like, what the hell? But, you know what, I dare say it's worth it. We'll see if the anime holds up. Season 1 of the anime, though, pretty good. I'll, I'll say that. I'll, I'll just put it in B tier, though, because there there's more than the first season of the anime that we're talking about here. So, yeah. k -On. I talked about this a lot in the Kyoto Animation tier list. k -On's very good. I like it a lot. I would say A tier, maybe a little below this stuff. Would I put it above? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely better than Hibike. Uh, Fooly Cooly. So, uh, actually, Fooly Cooly is the real Star Wars of anime where everyone is super fond of the original and then they keep trying to make new ones and it's like, no. Stop. Nobody asked for this. We don't need this anymore. That being said, I didn't like Fooly Cooly when I first watched it back in 2016. Definitely have to rewatch it. Maybe I would like it a little more, but I thought it was just too ridiculous. I didn't. I, I, it, it was not my thing at all. So, yeah. Uh, putting Naruto above this stuff. I really should just probably put Naruto in its own tier. <laughs> Naruto, Naruto gets the orange tier because he's orange. This is Arya. Haven't seen. My Hero Academia. The anime that invented anime. Hi, Reggie. Oh, it's Big Chungus Cat. 
Hey, big chungus cat. Sorry, I'm distracted by my super funny looking cat. Who's very, very cute. Um, one, yeah, my, my Hero Academia. Really good for the first couple of seasons. I thought it fell off a little bit in the third season. But then season four is where it picked back up. The overhaul arc, I thought, was absolutely amazing. Season five, however, I only got halfway through that, and I thought it was really boring because the, the entire first half was just one class fighting another, and it was not interesting at all. It's like, I already know who these characters are. I don't fucking care about this. This is not interesting. Get back to the actual story, please, which nowadays there's like, what, we're on like season fucking 30 of My Hero Academia? Uh, I gotta catch up to that. But it's fine. It's a fine series in general. Um, I'll say low B tier for now. Definitely has had some good arcs, though. Again, that overhaul arc. I don't know why people... I remember when that arc was going on, people were like, Oh, My Hero Academia is so bad now. Oh, this new season's so boring. And then I watch it, I'm like, This is by far the best this series has ever been. What the hell is everyone talking about? This is so good. This is what My Hero should, al should always be. It should focus on drama and stuff like that instead of fucking school. Spirited Away. Okay, so technically, I have seen Spirited Away. In fact, I have Spirited Away on DVD at home. But I haven't seen it in a very, very long time. So I'm not going to make any kind of opinion of it. But I have seen it. I'll, you know, it, it, it's one of those things for me. So, yeah. Mob Psycho 100. Um, sorry, I just I didn't pause for any specific reason. Mob Psycho 100, I like a lot. First two seasons are great. Season 3, I think, didn't necessarily fall off. But my thing is that I think the ending of it was, like, too ridiculous and extreme and just not really what I wanted. I have a whole thing on one of the finisher fails about that, so... I've talked about it, but overall, still a very good series. Still a series I'm very fond of. I would say high B tier. Although, if it was just the first two seasons, I would probably say A tier. Although, maybe I would do that because even though I don't love Season 3, it's not like Season 3 is all that bad. And even so, I still think the first two seasons are just so good on their own that they can, I can just say A tier for those specifically. But nah, I won't do that, because I'm mean. Sangatsu no Lion, I adore this series. S tier, it is a it is a favorite. Um, Actually better than Perfect Blue. Better than Sangatsu, actually better than most of this stuff. Yeah, Sangatsu, the way this series depicts depression with its main character is some of the best I've ever seen in anime. Um, Rei Kiriyama is just absolutely fantastic. And the characters around him are so great as well. Um... You know, the Kawamoto family, just everyone's so precious in there. Nikaido, adorable cinnamon roll. Um, Shimada in, I believe, the second season. So many great characters in, in this entire series. Yeah, it, it's just, it's awesome. Has that kind of a, it has that Monogatrian shaft abstraction to its visuals, but also presents itself with a much more, like, scratchy and kind of a... Um, unpolished style that gives it a lot of character. The way it actually handles tone changes in the anime. It, the tone changes can be very extreme, but they actually make sense. They actually work. Uh, not only for the story, but just in general. So, re yeah, really, really great storytelling in general. I, I love a lot about uh, Sangatsu. I really hope this series ends up making a comeback someday. If not, I don't know. I guess I'll have to read the manga or something to find out what happens because I, I love I love these guys and I want them to be happy in their lives. <laughs> Made in Abyss. Um, this series is so freaking good, dude. Made in Abyss is... Man, Made in Abyss literally saved me from anime burnout one time because there was a time when um, I was finishing up some stuff from the previous season, which was Spring 2017, and they, it was terrible. I watched... What was it? It was Sekai Sudukado, which is has an infamous story behind it. And then I think it was the King's Avatar, which sucked. 
and then Clockwork Planet after that, which was fucking abysmal. I just watched these three really bad anime, like, back-to-back, and I'm just like, I fucking hate this medium. This is this is terrible. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. And literally that day, Made in Abyss came out, and I knew nothing about this. I had never heard of this before. I didn't see anybody talking about it, but I just saw that it was available on, like, whatever platform it was. And I'm like, you know what? I'm in a pissed off mood, so I'm just going to watch this. And if I don't like it, I'm going to drop it. And I'm not even going to mark it as dropped in my animus. I'm not even going to acknowledge that it exists. So take that. And that first episode was unbelievable. Just one of the best first episodes I've ever seen in anything. I'm like, never mind, anime is the coolest thing ever. This is the best thing I've ever seen. What the hell is this? Where did this come from? And uh, then after a while, it blew up and became the... The, the most popular series well not the most popular series ever but yeah people really like it now and still i absolutely love what made in abyss does um the, the the settings the mechanics of that setting the the characters are really fun um it's beautiful both visually and musically e- everything about it is great i love that first season a whole lot i have such strong memories with it and then when season 2 finally came around like, I was almost afraid because I'm just like, where does this series even go? And also there was the movie in between, um, which, you know, I I also saw and I liked that a lot. But then season two, I was almost afraid. I'm just like, I wonder if I'm still going to like Made in Abyss as much as I did, you know, five years ago when the first season came out. And it got even better in this second season. I thought season two introduced an awesome setting that was kind of its own thing with its own rules, but also had so much at stake there. It was just so great, dude. Like season two of made in abyss is absolutely peak fiction. It's such a great series, dude. Now I'm even more afraid of like what's going to happen because it's like, where's the series go from there? But you know, not the first time I've asked that about made in abyss. The correct answer is nowhere because the guy doesn't work on that manga ever. (laughs) Unfortunately, (laughs) Yeah, but it's fun. Hi, Reggie. Hi, Reggie Rabbit. He's a he's a he's a. Oh, it's red. Look at this cat. Look at this cat. He's a bit, he's a he's a big chungus cat. That's what he is. Oh, he's a big chungus cat. He's a big squishy boy. All right, what's next? Kimi no Nawa, your name, the number one anime of all time at one point when it uh when it came out, um, and people were freaking out because it broke the record for highest grossing anime film before it even reached the states, and I think it actually lived up to the hype. I think that Shinkai, I, I actually agree with the sentiment that Shinkai is the new Miyazaki. Not because I think he makes films like Miyazaki, but because I think his films have a common appeal that is like Miyazaki, where you would show this to someone who doesn't like anime and they would be okay with it, essentially. Um, yeah, so, like, your name... It, 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 you know, it, it feels commercial. It feels like... It, it, it feels safe, I guess... But I think it's fine. It still tells a really, really good story. It is really, really good looking. It's just enjoyable overall. Like, I really don't have much to say um, against your name. I really like watching this movie. So, it's... I'm going to put an A tier. Like, why not? I know, you know, some of the elitists might hate that. But, I, I don't... It's just a plain good film. What can I say? It's fine. Granted, you know, some of Shinkai's films beyond this haven't been great. But... Or, or even before this, haven't been great, but, you know, he, he he hit a sweet spot with your name, and I think that's fine. V- very fun. Hosaki no Kuni, Land of the Lustrous, um, really good CG anime, you know, the CG anime that saved CG anime, where people finally show that it can be done. CG anime can look good and cool and awesome, and also tell really, really good stories with really, really intricate and complex characters who are also gemstones 
Lots of very, very weird fantasy setting. Lots of weird rules about that, but it is very interesting. Um, I'll put it in high B because I, you know, didn't completely love it when it when it first uh, came out. I mean, I, I did give it an eight, I believe. So it's not like I, I'm on the fence about loving it. It was good. I just, I need a little bit more. And I think we'll get season two eventually. Be, like, I think Studio Orange understands that people want this. And uh, I'm sure it'll happen eventually. Uh, Girls Last Tour. This series is great. Came out at the same time as Hoseki no Kuni. And, um... Yeah, it's it's a post-apocalyptic anime that's also very comfy because it's this very low-key, just quiet adventure with these two girls who are just kind of observing the world around them. And I, I love those kinds of stories. I love it when characters are just, they, they're not really, they don't really have a lot of direct direct action in the world. They're just kind of seeing things as they are. I think that's really cool. So I like the kind of story that this tells. I just wish there was a little bit more of it. That's the thing. So I'm also putting this in B tier. I wish we got like a second season or some kind of follow-up to give us the manga ending. Um, but yeah. But still, very good for what it is. Very enjoyable. Yudu Camp Triangle. I am still watching the third season of this and not liking it so much because the composition is fucking terrible. Um... The first two seasons I thought were fine. I was never I've never been crazy about this series. Like people really go crazy about YouTube Camp Triangle and are like this is the this is this is peak fiction, girls camping. And it, like I appreciate what this series has to teach people. I I think that's definitely the coolest thing about it. Um sometimes the atmosphere is really great. Sometimes it's really comfy. I like how Nadeshko can add a lot of energy to it. She's a great character. I hate her friends, though. I hate the side characters in this series, or most of the side characters in this series. Um, Nadeshko's sister is one of the hottest characters of all time. So there's that. That's cool. Um, Rin's family is also pretty pretty awesome. And Rin herself is a is a terrific character. Like, there there are good things about Yudu Camp Triangle, but the, some of the bad things about it really kind of uh, counterbalance it. And at the end of the day, I find myself being lightly amused by it, but not much more than that. So, unfortunately, for some people, I'm only putting Yuta Camp Triangle in the mid-tier. Now, a show that came out at the same time as Yuta Camp Triangle, A Place Further Than the Universe. This is a series that I didn't think I was ever going to get back in 2018. I honestly thought in 2018, I'm like... I have seen the best of anime, at least when it comes to seasonals. There will never be a seat Like, Made in Abyss is the last time I'm ever going to give a seasonal anime a 10 out of 10. Unless I'm being joking about it, like with King's Game. I'm never going to get, like, a... like a. There's never going to be a, a brand new anime that will um, appear in my favorites list. At least in my, my top five or anything. Like, I'll probably still change my favorites. I'm sure I'll find something that's older... And really like that. But I doubt anything new will come along and really change me in the way that something like Steins Gate did. And then Sora Yori came out and completely swept me off my feet. At first it just started off like, okay, I just want to see girls go to Antarctica. I just want to I just want to see that. Cute girls going to Antarctica. I don't care about the characters themselves. Don't do four episodes of character introductions. I don't care about that. And then after four episodes of character introductions, I'm like, this is the greatest series I've ever seen. Why is this so good? Why does this work for me so well? And it's a little bit hard to explain, at least hard to explain simply and quickly like I'm trying to. I don't know, dude. It's just like, I just thought the character writing was absolutely sublime. It was literally perfect. I thought individually they had great personalities, but the way they, they deepened, the way they developed was terrific. Um, extremely relatable. Hinata Miyake is literally me. Like, this character is just me. She's someone who's always trying to be, like, the, the, the smartest of the group. She's always trying to make these, like, profound quotes and, and stuff, but also has these uh, kind of uh, deep anxieties and tries to shoulder them her herself like like oh i've got this problem but i'm not going to tell anybody about it because i don't want them to worry and then i hate that they find out and then <laughs> and then ask me about it it's like stuff like that 
um, like, oh, I've got a problem with people, but I'm not going to say it to them directly. Instead, I'm just going to go off to the side and, and fucking break shit. <laughs> like, that's literally just me, dude. Like, some of the bad habits that this character has are me. I'm like, I can't believe this is in an anime. I can't believe this is so relatable. Um, just everything about Soriori I thought was amazing. Truly one of the best anime I've ever seen. To this day, still like number two or number three on my all-time list. So, yeah, it's it's just fantastic. It's so freaking good. Serial Experiments Lane, haven't seen, but I should. Uh, Liz and the Blue Bird is here, which I don't understand because this is part of... I don't... Why is this on here? It's literally part of Hibike Euphonium. I don't agree with this. I mean, I get it. It's a side story. It's kind of a different thing. But, like, I feel like that's kind of a slippery slope where if you're going to if you're gonna exclude Liz and the Bluebird because it's, I guess, different from the rest of the story, wouldn't you do that for some other series like Ava? Like, wh like why not separate the Ava rebuilds? Why not separate Madoka Rebellion? Um, I just feel like whoever made this list really likes CBK or specifically really likes Liz and the Bluebird. They're like, no, we have to have specific representation for Liz and the Bluebird. I don't, I don't like this. And also, I don't like Liz and the Bluebird. I don't fuck with this movie at all. I'll put it in mid. It's not bad. Um, but this was about two characters who I never liked in HBK Euphonium. And this, and, and I liked them even less in, in, the, in this movie. I was not interested in their drama whatsoever. The very slow, methodical pacing of this didn't work on me. I just really did not like it. It was absolutely 1,000% not my thing, so there's that. Review Starlight. I dropped that shit. That... <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it with Review Starlight. Um, although I also don't remember too much about it other than that it had some absolutely extravagant stage performances for whatever reason but I also hear like I dropped it in the first couple episodes and apparently a lot of crazy shit happens in this series so I definitely missed out on a lot someday I, I and I and I have gone on record by saying that someday I will get back to Review Starlight to see it but I, I just remember really not messing with the vibe of it with the characters the, the the general story something about it something about the entire thing was just not something I liked so I don't know. Uh, Bunny Girl Senpai. Rascal does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. The anime series with the stupidest titles ever. We're now getting Knapsack Girl or whatever. Who the f like? I, I can't be I can't be seen watching this stuff because I can't like tell people that's what it is. Oh yeah, I'm watching Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. I would get but that is the definition of something that gets you shoved into a locker when you're in school. Good thing I'm not in that anymore. But I am the one doing the shoving. I br I'm breaking into your high school and finding you and uh, shoving you into a locker if I find out that you're watching Bunny Girl Senpai. Anyway, this shit dropped. I I, I dropped this shit in like ten minutes. This was so stupid. I, I just didn't like this show whatsoever. It's I'm like, okay, it's another it's another monogatari knockoff where it's got these characters who are trying to be really deep and intellectual but also really witty and none of it's working on me. I don't like it, not for me. And then suddenly it became like the most popular series ever. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with all of you guys? <laughs> so maybe someday I will watch it out of spite, but that time has not come because I don't want to watch it at all. <laughs> Uh, wait. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is on here, even though Full Metal Alchemist 2003 is on here. I guess that one's actually... I guess I guess this is a little more forgivable, but still a little bit weird that they did that. Grand Blue is on here. I'm, I'm surprised that Grand Blue is on here, because everyone hates the Grand Blue adaptation. This is a pleasant surprise, because I actually like Grand Blue. And yes, Grand Blue anime is not very good. It does not adapt the manga all that well, but a 5 out of 10 adaptation of Grand Blue is still a 9 out of 10 anime because it is really that good. It, Grand Blue is my favorite manga of all time, and I still revisit it occasionally. I haven't caught up to it in a long time, but I still come, sometimes go back to older chapters and I just laugh my ass off. Just I, I, I don't know how to explain it because comedy is just one of those things where you either get it or you don't. 
and that's all I can really say about Grand Blue. Either you, th- either you get the jokes and they land, and you think they're hilarious, or you just think it's stupid. Which I mean, it is stupid. Like it is juvenile, but it's great. I don't, I don't know what else to say beyond that. So, <laughs> Grand Blue, very good. Uh, Clan Ad, this shit dropped. Fuck Clan Ad. Fuck Key. Fuck June Maida. Not as a person, just as a creator. I just don't like his stuff. He's not a bad person or anything, all right? I, I have to elaborate on that because then people... Because I say, like, oh, yeah, fuck you, June Maida. And then people are like, oh, June Maida is depressed. You shouldn't say that about him. I'm like, guys, it's, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying I don't like his stuff. I don't think he needs... I don't think he deserves to die or anything. Like, holy shit. It's not that deep. Uh, Violet Evergarden... Um, I've talked about this on the Kyo animation, Kyoto animation tier list. Um, so briefly, basically, I kind of got taken by the hype with Violet Evergarden. It, ra- rather, the hype um, ha- gave me very elevated expectations of Violet Evergarden that it just could not live up to. It gave this series impossible expectations to live up to. And I wasn't sure what to expect in the beginning. And I don't know what I got in the end, but I don't. I didn't like it very much. But I also feel like I might have been a little bit unfair to it. So, basically, my TLDR opinion of Violet Evergarden is that I don't like it very much, but I'm definitely willing to give it another shot someday because I feel like it deserves that. I also need to watch the movies and stuff, although I heard they were not very good. Or at the very least, they didn't end very well. Uh, I should know what this is. Oh, this is Utena. Okay. Haven't seen it anyway. Bloom Into You. This is a good series. Um, I didn't like this. The thing about Bloom Into You is that I didn't connect with it. That's basically the thing. It's not that I don't like it. It's just that I didn't connect with it. But overall, it still tells a fine story. Another case where I wish there was a little bit more to it. But it's it's good. It's it's one of those things where it's not for me. So, like, I definitely don't love it as much as maybe a lot of other people would. But I'm cool with it. It's like, I'm glad it exists. I still, I enjoyed it somewhat. Just not, I just wasn't taken by it. But I respect it. A Silent Voice. This anime is amazing. Also on the Kyoto Animation tier list. Have you noticed that there are a lot of Kyoto Animation shows on here? Or pro- productions on here? I wonder if that says something. Um, extremely relatable main character for me. Extremely compelling story in general. Very intense atmosphere, but I loved that. Uh, really, really great payoffs as well to all of it. I love A Silent Voice a whole freaking bunch. I think that it's just one of the best ever. So, yeah. Pro- yeah, uh, definitely my favorite anime movie at this point, And one of my favorite movies in general. All of that should be obvious, I guess. Hunter Hunter, haven't seen, but I should. And Fruits Basket, haven't seen, but I should. Well, actually, I don't know if I would like Fruits Basket if I watched it, but... Yeah, it exists. And then we're ending this with Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is a series that I watch sometimes, and I think, okay, that was fine, I suppose. Um, but I'm not all that enthusiastic about it. Some of the characters are fucking terrible, but Zenitsu is kind of funny. Uh, the action can look really good sometimes. I'm not particularly floored by it. I'm not like, ooh, UFO table, so good. It's just, just like, okay, you know, that, that was kind of cool. Um, I really don't get why the hype for it is so immense, but I also don't really have that much of a problem with it. So if this is what the kids liked, the, if this is what the kids like these days, so be it. There are worse things they can stand that are lower on this list. Um, you know what? I'm going to remove this tier. I guess this tier wasn't necessary at, after all. Actually, sorry, no. Um, we'll move this tier and put it and get and put Naruto in it. <laughs> Naruto. Orange tier. Naruto. Um do I have witty titles for these other tiers? I'll probably think of them off screen, but just not now. But yeah, this is the tier list. That's 100 anime on this tier list. Surprisingly, I've actually seen most of them. Isn't that nice? Don't I feel special? I've actually seen most of these, but I probably should have seen all of them, but I haven't because I have other hobbies like watching the Royals get their asses kicked. Are they still losing by the, a billion points? Let's see. 
This isn't legal, by the way. I'm not allowed to actually do this. I shouldn't be showing you this. But I will anyway, because I'm funny. <laughs> oh, they scored. Hey, 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 it's a, hey, this is a game now. Okay, cool. Nice. Good, 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 good job, good job. All right, uh, so that's gonna do it for this. If you have any opinions on this, then uh, tell me, and I will totally not ignore them. I guess. Yeah. All right. B bye.